Every haunted place has a story with a dark past. This is Ghost Encounters Podcast. Welcome back, all you spooky people, to the Ghost Encounters Podcast. I am paranormal investigator Justin Torok. And I'm Jordan, the group scientist. I'm Hannah, your death-obsessed bestie. And we have a very special guest today. Please welcome Jordan's older sister, Paige Balterson. Woo! Yay! Thanks for having me back on. Of course. Well, I needed you on. I needed, <laughs> needed you on for this episode. Uh, because of all the hype that's going around with Greek mythology, since the Percy Jackson show is out, this episode is on Greek mythology monsters. And I know you are a avid lover, enthusiast, and knowledgeable person about Greek mythology. Oh, no. <laughs> this is a special interest. Yeah, it's a, yeah. I do like Greek mythology, but it's it's a lot to take in. <laughs> yes, there's a is. lot of it. I don't understand anything. Yeah, it's... I know like lot, nine but... things. Which is why we have Paige on for yes. this episode. Thank goodness. Yes. So today we journey deep into the history of Greek mythology where ancient tales come to life and creatures of unimaginable terror lurk in the shadows. Brace yourselves for a harrowing encounter with the most notorious Greek mythology monsters, from the fearsome Minotaur to the seductive Sirens. The stories of the monsters of Greek mythology are anything but ordinary. Join us. For the darkness of the ancient world awaits. Before we get in to the monsters on this episode, we have to go back to the beginning, to the mother of monsters. Jordan, why don't you start off? Okay, I'm going to start off with Echidna. Echidna has the upper half of a woman and the lower body of a serpent, described as being large, coiling, double serpent tails, and is hideous and has speckled skin. So it's the Starbucks lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Very cool. All right. <laughs> she is known as a fearsome monster who is known as the mother of monsters, like we already said, and apparently loved to feast on raw human flesh. Her mate, Typhon, created several monstrous offspring. Echidna's children are some of the most feared and famous monsters to be found in Greek mythology. She was believed to represent the natural rotting and decay of the earth. Damn. As if she can't get any grosser. Um, Echidna, therefore, represented stagnant, foul-smelling water, slime, disease, and sickness. Fuck. She sucks. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She's in her swamp hag era. So, Paige, do you want to tell us a little bit about Echidna's origin? Yeah, apparently Echidna, there's, there's several myths about where she has come from. Um, her parents are Tartarus and Gaia. Uh, Tartarus is described as one of the, the earliest beings alongside Chaos, Eros. And um, basically, Tartarus is also known as like the abyss of like torment. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I always <laughs> get so confused. I'm like, Tartarus, I think of like, I don't know. See, yeah. Like a thing, like not like a person, but like a place. A place so then yeah. when we like start talking about stuff, I'm like, my mind's like thinking of like this <laughs> endless pit of hell. And then really like, it's like, it made things. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, like my mind just doesn't understand. There's a ton of myths everywhere. So like one being everyone, everyone knows Tartarus as literally. It's like, like underworld hell. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Of, sort of. Got and, it. Um, yeah. Tartarus is her father and um, Gaia is her mother. They were also titans. See, this is another thing. Like, when we start doing this, I sent Hannah um, a three-hour documentary that I attempted to watch just recently, (laughs) and I felt bad because I had to pause it all the fucking time for Paige to tell me what the fuck was going on because I'm like, (laughs) what are they? Who's a titan? Who are? Because they just refer to them as the titans, like, halfway through the documentary because they're like, you're supposed to know what the fuck I'm talking about at this point. (laughs) And I'm just like, I don't understand what's going on. So Paige has to explain all of it to me all the time. (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Now that I'm done with my tangent, go ahead. Um, Echidna is also, um, some of the myths, they also said that she came from the River Styx in the underworld as well. Interesting. And compared to Typhon, her partner, um, she was just like another monster, but Typhon was more hideous. (laughs) <laughs> then her, oh, which wow. which actually she's a lot. Like, uh, yeah, I so, actually uh, talk about that in my notes. I'll, I'll get yeah, to that. Yeah, like, yeah. like I said, like Greek Greek writers, they they change their her genealogy okay. all the time, like throughout stories, gotcha. and it just like, yeah. and okay. it even includes like the monsters like they had. It always comes back to Echidna and 
my phone. So it's pretty interesting about her. The creation of monsters is often um, used to explain unfavorable natural phenomena like whirlpools, decay, and earthquakes. I thought I would add that in because when we go on, you'll I'll like tie in some natural things as to why they would have thought like the chimera and stuff like that was right. a thing. I'll, I'll explain it then. But going back to um, Echidna and Typhon, Echidna mated with one of the most feared monsters in all of ancient Greek mythology. Get it, um, he was a giant monstrous serpent. He is described as having eyes made of fire, 100 snake heads, as well as the heads of 100 dragons sprouting from the ends of his fingers. How big like, is this motherfucker? Apparently like I said, they like refer hideous. to him as like touching the dome of the sky. You know, like just Jeez. being like a massive motherfucker. Yeah. Just yeah. real goddamn big. And yeah. Ugly. <laughs> and a lot of heads. Ugly as fuck. You know, some like I love when they show the drawings online when you try to look them up because they just look so badass. Like, they yeah. sound ugly, but when people draw them, it's just like, holy shit, that kind of looks like he could <laughs> fuck shit up, you know? Yep. <laughs> With all of his many, many mouths. Yeah. Gaia created Typhon as a weapon to be used against the king of gods who lived on Mount Olympus, Zeus. Should have been able to take his little bitch ass out, but that's besides <laughs> the point. And wanted revenge on Zeus because the almighty god of thunder tended to kill or imprison most of her children. Typhon felt that after the Titans were dealt with, that um, it was his time to take over Mount Olympus, which pissed Zeus off, naturally, right. because he's the leader. He's yeah, don't, big ever, shot. don't ever try yeah. to overthrow Mount Olympus with that yeah. daddy of gods. <laughs> Zeus will be angry. So he shot Typhon um, with a lightning ball, causing him to fall to Earth, and he fell onto a mountain, and Zeus shot this mountain a fuck ton of times with lightning bolts. He's like, bah, 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 bah. And um, <laughs> the mountain basically like erupted, and it trapped um, Typhon under Mount Etna for all eternity. So Echidna and her offspring, in the, the adaption that I, I read, um, were able to get away, but in some stories, uh, it like made all of this ash and shit, like a debris, fall onto them. So they were trapped in the cave, Echidna and the offspring. Ah. Uh -huh. Finishing up, the queen of the gods, Hera, sends a giant to kill Echidna as she slept. Because of the danger that she posed travelers, she is killed in her cave by a 100-eyed giant Argus, which I love his story before he obviously kills people, but it's okay. He's a really cool story because it's like eyes when he dies, they go on the peacock and everything. I really uh -huh. like that story. <laughs> yeah. So is the mother like... of monsters dies. Yep, even though she's supposed to be immortal. Right. That's unfortunate. So she can't yeah. birth any more new monsters. Nope. So whatever she made, she made. And we see Echidna in the Percy Jackson show. Yeah, which I thought was, uh, to be honest, when she came Did they make her ugly? No. Oh. She's what? just a normal... From what I'm assuming from the show is that they can like probably take the form of a human yeah. and like, present themselves that way to blend in. Yeah, that's but she probably nice. actually really is ugly. Did they ever like show her true form in the show yet? Not yet, no. They, they just showed her like as a symbol like she and looks like evil. a businesswoman yeah, to be but honest she's evil. she looks like she's definitely a Karen yeah <laughs> definitely like, she would definitely talk to the manager yeah you know but uh, yeah the show's been pretty good so far yeah it has um, but then we also see the the chimera the chimera yeah, it's in like her little purse or whatever the hell she's carrying <laughs> it's just jiggling about and what yeah on the like the the train that they're on, and the she's just casually, and it develop, it's growing oh. as it progresses and grows as the episode goes on. So you're like, what the hell is in this bag, or yeah. whatever the hell she's carrying? It's like, oh, it's. And a then you're like, dog. um, okay, so it's her, one of her kids. That is just absolutely horrifying. Yeah, but what's funny is when normal people see it. It's like a little fluffy little dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a purse dog. It's a purse yeah. dog. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. But then when, like, people that are, like, like the demigods, God people, yeah. they can see, yeah, like, Percy the actual can, scary yeah. mother. Yeah. Okay. It's like... But speaking of, let's go to that next. Okay, yeah. So one of um, Echidna's offspring is the Chimera. She was a fire-breathing creature that terrorized Lycia and was made up of different animal body parts, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. It is usually depicted as a lion with the head of a goat protruding from its back and a tail that ended with a snake's head. The Chimera was living in the mountains of Lycia and apparently killing people and their livestock, like apparently the cows and their sheep, and you know, you don't fuck with people's shit. Um, the person that had to deal with this issue was a person by the name of Bellerophon. Uh, the adaption says he was next to rule as the king of 
Corinth. Okay. I hope that's the way you say it. And a descendant of Sisyphus, who tried to trick the gods, and as a punishment, Zeus banished his soul to the depths of Tartarus, where he was sentenced to push a huge boulder up a steep slope. But every time he went to push this rock up, it never, like, went all the way up. It would fall, and then he would have to keep restarting and restarting and restarting. That? Yeah. It sucks. That's yeah. One way. So, like, a, you're just and struggling. Yeah, like, <laughs> I would think that was more unfortunate, except Sisyphus was a dick. Look at that boulder. That's a nice boulder. <laughs> oh my so Bellerophon accidentally killed his brother and was exiled to the land of King Proteus. He was told to go on a trip to give a sealed letter to um, one of his friends who was named Iobates, who was the king of Lycia. Proteus um, wanted Bellerophon dead because apparently he had like a fling with his wife or some Ooh, shit. Of course he did. But like they didn't prove it. They were just like, oh, we're just gonna kill him because this is Greek mythology and we do what we want. And um, basically, Iobates didn't want to do any of his friends' dirty work naturally. So instead, he was like, oh, word, we got this chimera problem. He's out here, or she's out here, I should say, slaughtering some fucking livestock and killing my people. We're just gonna. Just gonna send this guy out. So they tried to send Bellerophon also because um, they didn't think any normal man would be able to fulfill such a task. Like, they were like, oh, this guy's full of shit. There's no way he's gonna fucking kill this guy Mira that we have this problem with. Right. So it was like a suicide mission. Yeah, basically. So instead okay. of, like, them killing him and not being able to explain how he died, they're like, yeah, we're gonna have this fucking monster kill him. You know, no big deal. And, um, side note, Bellerophon was the son of Poseidon. So he had the gods to rally behind him. So Athena helped him catch um, an immortal Pegasus. You know what Pegasus yep. is? So horse winged thingy, my bobby. So once he got his little trusty horse sidekick from the sky, the hero came up with a strategy to kill the Chimera, which was to attach a ball of lead to the spear he had and then thrust it into the monster's mouth. Because it breathed fire, like it breathed fire. Yeah. And while it was trying to kill him, the Chimera choked on the molten lead. Interesting God. way that's, to do yeah, that. Yeah, that's like creative. Yeah. I can dig it. You gotta think outside the box to kill these things sometimes. Since he killed the Chimera, he got a little bit ahead of himself uh, and thought he was big and bad. Okay. And in doing so, he took it amongst himself to fly up to Mount Olympus oh, no. and thought he could live there. You no. know, become, oh, become one of them. Zeus is gonna whoop ya. Zeus, however, did not take that lightly at all, because Zeus is like, the fuck are you doing here, basically? Like, you're not a god. Yeah. Just because you killed this fucking monster, you're not gonna... Yeah. What the hell? You're, you're not gonna stay up here. You just can't stay with us! So... Mean Girls reference. Doesn't even go here. <laughs> <laughs> so then, the Pegasus that Athena gifted yeah. Bellafon, um... Zeus sent a gadfly. I don't know what they are, but it stung. It's like a bitey fly. Yeah, it stung the Pegasus. Aww. And it basically... Yeet. Ye yeah, <laughs> literally threw <laughs> Bellafron off, threw Bellafron off the Pegasus, and he plunged to his death. Broke his neck So, and moral of the story... Was the Pegasus okay? And I don't it's know. It's immortal, so I yeah, so. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, hoping. I'm well, so, is, so is Echidna. Other yeah, Bellerophon. Right. Other immortal other things than Bellerophon. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go with Pegasus. Did did yeah, survive? Okay. Because okay. We're animal people here, y'all. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> the dog does not die in this uh, in this podcast. So me being the group scientist and all this yak yak, um, <laughs> I decided to add in um, a possible reason for the Chimera story. Um, which is that there's a mountain in modern day Turkey that has fires that are always burning. These vents emit burning methane thought to be of metamorphic origin. So these landmarks were used, you know, by sailors to like figure out where they were going and stuff sure, like sure, that. Yeah. So I just like, they have like pictures online. They actually call it like Mount Chimera and stuff like that too. Oh, okay. Um, where literally there's just like. You know, like, in a scene of, like, Ghost Rider, there's, like, the little fires that are coming out, and he can, like, scoop them up and throw them? Yeah. It, they look just like that. Oh, wow. Okay. Like, they just, like, yeah. these little, like, areas that just have fire coming out of them. So, naturally, like, you could easily make up a story about a mythical monster that's up there causing fucking bullshit to happen and whatever yeah. Yeah. of a natural thing that's happening. Another little fun thing that I want to talk about is the term Chimera has, um been used in a lot of forensics if anybody knows really? stuff mm -hmm. about forensics yeah i'm super big into like forensic files and shit like that so um 
before I get ahead of myself, the term chimera has um, come to describe any mythical or fictional creature with parts taken from various animals, but can also be used for humans. So a human chimera is a subset of cells with a distinct genotype than other cells and is called genetic chimerism. In contrast, an individual where each cell contains genetic material from a human and an animal is called a animal-human hybrid. So that's a little bit different than this genetic chimerism that we're talking about. But this is why some murders are hard to be caught. Like um, their DNA from like their mouth or their hair is completely different than their reproductive DNA. So oh. they have two sets of basically DNA in their body. Oh. Wild. So yeah, so they refer to that as genetic chimerism. That's crazy. So weird. So that's the end of my spiel on the chimera. So if you guys want to wrap that up, Paige, with your shit. good shit. I mean, yeah. I if anyone wants to see like what a chimera like is portrayed or looked at, like in Greek mythology. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you could watch Wrath of the Titans. It's the sequel to. Clash of the Titans. I loved Clash of the Titans um, just because it came out right around Avatar, like right after mm-hmm. Avatar, where he was like a big deal to me. So I was like, this actor, I gotta go see it. Yeah. <laughs> Which so, actor was the actor? I don't know his name. So I did. just know what he looks Sam like. Oh, okay. It's Jake Sully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Sam Worthington, he plays Perseus in the films, and in Wrath of the Titans, he is actually the one that kills this Chimera. Oh, cool. So wow. it's like it's. Like I said, there's so many different so many myths and, and shit. Like so it's like whatever story you want to stick with, I think it's pretty cool. That's why I like Yeah, regardless, because you it's could all just go in circles place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. forever. Yeah. <laughs> forever. Well without going in circles, what is next? So another offspring of Echidna is Cerberus. This is um, my absolute favorite. Oh, I yeah? want to say of the monsters, yes. Baby. Yeah. Yeah. Baby puppy. <laughs> yeah. So Cerberus is a three headed hound who guards the gates of the underworld and is sometimes sometimes referred to as the Hound of Hades. Cerberus is described as having three heads along with several serpent heads protruding from its body. The Hound also possesses the tail of a serpent, which I never knew there was any serpent. Yeah, I didn't know there was any serpent thing But that makes sense if it's like an offspring of Echidna who was a serpent. Why do these things have so many fucking heads? I don't know. That's like a thing. It, it's got in multiple a lot heads. Of, it's got heads coming out of other places. It's got a different kind of tail. Like that's it's sex. it's like in a yeah. lot of different Fucking fingers mythologies <laughs> from different places. Like I know in the Norse mythology, there's like giants with a hundred heads. He allowed those Cerberus. He allowed those who had already crossed the river Styx to enter, but prevented the living from ever setting foot in the underworld by devouring them. Which I think Shit. is pretty awesome, to be honest. Like, <laughs> of course you're not su- you think that's awesome. <laughs> you're not supposed to be there. First of all, you're living. You're not supposed yeah. to be in the underworld. Why would you even want to go? And Ask exactly. Orpheus. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <clears throat> if a soul tried to escape from the underworld, Cerberus would catch them, clearly. Cerberus was involved in one of Hercules' labors. Um, he had to bring Cerberus to the living world and show him to the king, who I don't know the name of right now who was in charge of Hercules' labors. Well, he fucking hated Hercules. Like, he just wanted him to fail. You know, he just didn't <laughs> that's why want he gave him 12 labors to yeah. say, hey, like, that's a lot of labors. <laughs> yeah. The story goes that Hades warned Hercules that he cannot use any weapons on Cerberus, and also his dog could not eat anything in the living world, or Hercules would suffer his wrath. So, like, he can't even have, like, dog food or anything? Nope, when he was on his travel, because he, he's a part of the underworld. It's like how it's he like trapped Persephone or Persephone, Persephone whatever her name yeah, is. yeah, underworld rules. Yeah. Then that's the that's big underworld man. Apparently, Hercules, yeah. like, really felt that he cared about this dog, so Hercules obviously listened, and um, when Hercules captured Cerberus and took him to the king, according to the one story that I was watching, or reading, I don't know, goes to say that the king hid in a vase and he was scared shitless of the monster. <laughs> um, he should be. Do you know why he was in the underworld? Like, how did he, how did Hades acquire Cerberus? Cerberus? So, here again, there's a ton of myths of okay. how he got Cerberus. Oh my gosh, I'm so surprised. So, one of the, the one that I follow is that um, Zeus, after defeating Typhon, Okay. Aka the father of his basic yeah yeah Cerberus's daddy yeah Cerberus's father um, <laughs> daddy <laughs> Zeus being the big brother gifted Cerberus 
to Hades. Oh, okay. As like, okay, so now that I feel like shit for putting in the underworld, here's a fucking here's three-headed Christmas. dog. Oh, here's a three-headed dog. And like, yeah, and this, I'm... They talk about like Cerberus as being like a like a dog. Like he's literally like, you know, he's excited. Hey, you just came over River mm-hmm. Sticks. Hey, <laughs> welcome to the party. And, but if you fucked up, he would eat your ass. Eat you. You so know? yeah, like that's... he knew like how to follow the rules, uh-huh. yeah, just a, like a dog, a well trained yeah. dog. He's a good boy. He oh. is a good boy. <laughs> Bring me the puppies. Yeah, he could definitely flip on a dime though. Yeah, I would say, and he's a very he's very loyal to Hades, which is. Kind of why I love Cerberus as a monster because wow. he, okay. his buddy, his yeah, dog, his dog buddy. has a job. And I was gonna say something about the show, the new Percy Jackson show, but I don't want to spoil it because someone over here hasn't watched a couple episodes. Oh, so no. well, uh, I don't spoiler, spoiler, spoiler alert, alert for all you people. Spoiler Just go alert. ahead. Yeah. Uh, since we are talking about Cerberus, he was in the latest episode of Percy Jackson. Oh, that's oh, cool. Wow. Okay. And cool. Cer- Cerberus looked like um, how do I say this? Oh, like Rottweiler. Heads. Oh, so okay. he had like the Rottweiler figure, like oh, with cool. the three was he heads. Big, or was he like a yeah? He person? was he was huge. Oh okay. <laughs> because it's funny because Percy is down there with Annabeth and Grover, and what do you know? They're living beings. So oh. they're trying to cross, and Sharon the the fairy man. Oh, mm-hmm. the fairy blew man. the whistle, but oh. you couldn't hear it. So it's like uh, a dog whistle, and then all of a sudden you. Oh that's that's awesome. clever. I like that. And they distract it because it it's so funny that you said oh, it's like a little puppy. Yeah. It's distracted with a squeaky toy. Oh, oh that's and they're like they're trying to play with it. So it, it's yeah. Bring yeah, you can tell puppy. that he is a dog. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. he has like, yeah. like domesticated dog tendencies and stuff like that, but you badass I still. Know. Let's get to Hydra. Hydra. And speaking of Hercules, the animated series, you see Hydra in Hercules. Hercules yes. defeats Hydra. Mm-hmm. How does Hercules defeat Hydra? He cuts off their heads. But then. But then he figured out, like, if, because everyone knows the myth of. If you cut off one head, two more yes. grow. So it says in the myths that if you basically light up a torch and. Oh, it's like it's you cauterize the wound. Yes. Yeah. So that stops it from growing. Ew. I just think like when we were we were talking about this last night and I'm like, that is the stupidest way to kill a monster. I was like, there needs to be some badass epicness to it. They're like, nah, he just put this hot stick on him and then, you know, <laughs> yeah. he died. Like his his yeah. last you know, head sprouted is, and they cut off his last head. I'm like, that's there a is dumb more way to, to the die. story, which I'm assuming you well, yeah, which you're going to help with, but let's uh, okay. let's give a <laughs> little description of Hydra. All right, Justin. Um, the serpentine monstrosity, born of primordial chaos, is a grotesque manifestation of horror. Its scaly skin conceals multiple serpent heads, each one possessing a ravenous thirst for destruction. As the Hydra prowls through its lair, its foul breath permeates the air. Its eyes, like smoldering embers, gleam with malevolence that knows no end. The heads, crowned with venomous fangs and oozing venom, snap and hiss with malicious intent. The Hydra is an embodiment of relentless terror, for every time a head is severed, two more sprout in its place. To face this loathsome creature is to confront the abyss itself, where only the most courageous dare to tread. I feel like I need to snap after that. That was really good. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, So we know this is another offspring of Echidna. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Um, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? I know, like, I know what it, we know what it looks like. Um, I know it's one of her offspring, but can you tell us where the Hydra was living or where it dwelled before it was killed by Hercules? Yeah. So the Hydra in Greek mythology, um, it was said that it lived in a lair, like a swampland near the town of Lerna. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, where it terrorized the locals and wreaked havoc, just like as all, all the monsters do. do. Yeah, <laughs> just fucking um, up the locals. Yeah, so, and it possessed regenerative abilities right, that made it the heads and, invincible. Yeah. So it is kind of a cool monster because you're like... Do we like, know why Hercules killed it? I think why are you looking at me? <laughs> it was part of his, know. it was one of his... Tasks? His, yeah. Okay, one of his impossible tasks is yes. that he had to kill yeah. the thing that would regenerate its fucking heads. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> it's must... one of his labors, and he... this was the one that they took the labor away, though, right? Yes, because 
he had his nephew slash cousin or however you want to interpret it help Hercules. So that's why it wasn't considered a labor then. So this is yeah. So it this, didn't count. No. Oh, that's okay. So this that is, is one of the this is when the labors this with that king that was hated a dick. him. Yeah. <laughs> Took the labor away because he's like, okay, yeah, you uh, you killed the Hydra, but you, you also help. had help. That shit. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> so it's called thinking outside the box. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you dumb shit. That sucks. Well, let's take a short break, and when we get back, we'll have some more Greek mythology monsters. This episode is brought to you by the Colony Meter. If you haven't tried meat yet, it's alcohol made for money, it's all natural, totally gluten-free, and delicious. Colony Meadery is one of the best meaderies in the world, and it's located in Pennsylvania's Lehigh Valley. Stop in and try a flight of meads, grab some bottles or cans to go, and experience some of the best booze in the world. They have flavors ranging from tart and quaffable lemon laws and Wu-Tang Crayon, to sweet cinnamon vanilla series of tubes, and even sweet heat with their mango habanero. Learn more at colonymeadery.com. Speaking of mead, Ghost Encounters and Colony Meadery did a collab, and we came out with a caramel apple mead called Spooky to the Core. It's scary how delicious this mead is. Grab some today and haunt your taste buds. Ghost Encounters is sponsored by Phoenix Fire Media. Elevate your business with their digital marketing strategies, including their multi-award winning social media marketing, photography, and video production. Phoenix Fire Media, igniting success through creative excellence. Visit phoenixfiremedia.com. If you're enjoying the Ghost Encounters podcast, hit subscribe and give us five stars. To watch full episodes of the Ghost Encounters show, visit ghost-encounters.com. And don't forget, when you're on our website, click on The Spooky Shop for all your Ghost Encounters spooky swag. To stay up to date with Ghost Encounters, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Ghost Encounters PA. To send spooky fan stories, email ghostencounterstories at gmail.com or message us on social. Do you want ad-free episodes of Ghost Encounters Podcast, plus bonus episodes, extra content, and much more? Then you should head to Patreon and be a spooky VIP. Go to patreon.com forward slash Ghost Encounters Podcast and be haunted from all the benefits with the spooky VIP membership. And we are back. Let's get to the Minotaur. Minotaurs are used in a bunch of things all over the place, and people like to yeah. see pictures of it. Sometimes they use them as mascots and all kinds of stuff. We all know it's a half-man, half-bull kind of creature. This abomination is a nightmarish fusion of man and beast, a monstrous hybrid birthed from the darkest depths of a curse. Its towering form, half-human, half-bull, evokes a visceral dread that chills the bravest souls. From the shoulders of this loathsome creature sprout powerful muscles, while its lower half twists into a gnarled, hoofed monstrosity. Its eyes, filled with an insatiable hunger for flesh, gleam <laughs> with an eerie malevolence. I'm sorry. <laughs> she laughs. <laughs> it, it, uh, like, it makes no sense to me for a bull to be eating flesh. It doesn't. But that said, I also once saw a horse eat a bird. That doesn't make sense. To Not you. at all. That's a fucking more. omen. <laughs> I wouldn't want to see that. I mean, I didn't witness it with my eyes. I witnessed it with my eyes on the internet. So, oh, God. <laughs> if you Google fake. it, I'm sure you'll find it. It's <laughs> Horses are terrifying. I'm very scared of horses. But continue. I'm so sorry. You're good. A guttural snarl escapes its misshapen mouth, revealing rows of jagged, blood-stained teeth. The Minotaur is a relentless hunter, stalking its prey through its labyrinth-like maze corridors, its footsteps echoing like death bells. The stench of fear permeates the air as its monstrous form draws near, a reminder of the price paid for trespassing into the lair of this vile, mythical horror. Paige, can you tell me where this fucking hybrid <laughs> monstrosity came from? In mythology, its origin is rooted in a dark tale of punishment and a curse. So King Minos of Crete incurred the wrath of God, Poseidon. And as his as this result, his wife, I don't know how to say her name. Pasiphae. Pasiphae. Thank you, Hannah. You're welcome. Was cursed to fall in love with a bull. Yikes. And Ew. from this unnatural <laughs> union, the Minotaur was born. Ew, so she literally was forced to fall in love with a bull. Bestiality! And then, yeah. 
Well, that's what happens when you fuck and with then the gods. So. And honestly, thing. Zeus did that kind of shit all the time. See, exactly. Zeus Zeus was a bunch of animals. The gods? Really? The gods? Oh, my God. Very, I don't know. Stop. Like, if you go against the gods, they, they'll they'll find a way, a twisted way to torture your life. This thing ends up growing, and it's just hungry for human flesh all the time. Right? Yeah. So this king made, King Minos made a maze or a labyrinth to trap this thing in, right? Yep. Yeah, he, yeah. He created And he has oh. cow brains, so he can't escape. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so the Minotaur was imprisoned. Yeah, and uh, this labyrinth that the Minotaur was in was designed by Daedalus. Okay. And like Justin said, like its sole pur- purpose was to devour young victims that were sent from Athens as a tribute to Crete. Oh, okay. So this is so where like... you mentioned last night when we were talking about the seven men and the seven women oh, yeah, that so were like basically re- sacrificed. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. And Theseus was like... I volunteered! He literally, <laughs> being a hero <laughs> that he is, he's like, okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do this so I'm gonna, don't have to do this shit no more. I'm gonna go in to this labyrinth. He has balls because... I, for one, hell no. I'd be dead already. <laughs> days. But um, that's how Theseus came to be heroic. Because oh, okay. So he... this is like his story? Yes. Okay. So this is a Theseus... coming to tale kind of yes. legend. Okay. So Theseus and the Minotaur, yeah, he ventured into this freaking... Did he go after him because the Minotaur was eating Yes. Children? So basically yeah. he... Right. He was he like, I gotta himself. stop. <laughs> yeah. So the yep. only thing I know about this is that he was armed with nothing but a fucking ball of thread, which I think is so funny. But I guess he used that to like find his way through, yep. so he knew which places he went already, which is smart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if smart. they ask you, if they're like, "Hey, what do you want when you need to go to this maze to kill this thing?" It's pretty damn fucking smart that he wasn't like, "No, I need this beer. No, I need this. I need that." He was like, "I want some thread, That's I want so I can get my bitch ass yarn, out right? after yep. I kill this motherfucker." So he finds his way through this maze. Yep, and he has the yarn. How problem. did he kill the Minotaur? So, um, there's different different myths again, but um. He either used his bare hands, badass, yeah, to kill him, or he had a club, also pretty badass. To like literally, the demigods and shit are so badass. They're just like, I'm gonna wrangle this motherfucker <laughs> and kill them. Like it's I'm go like, time. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Like they're like Hulk out like in these stories. Yeah. It's yeah. wild. Like so he basically used a club or his bare hands and killed this Minotaur. And since he was smart to bring the ball of yarn, he could get, he could get the hell back out of wow. the slab. Yeah, right. He didn't That's even cool starve story. to death in the maze. No. <laughs> He's like, hell no, I'm getting in, I'm getting the yeah, fuck he was like, out. In and out. Yeah. So, and is I, this in any I like other, is this in like movies? Like is this yeah, so pop culture Henry, reference? Henry Cavill, my, my favorite, because oh. he's so fine. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, his character is Theseus in the movie, the, um, Immortals with like Immortals. Luke Evans. Okay. okay, yeah, that one. Luke Evans is Zeus in it. Um, and he, they actually have a scene where he goes in to the labyrinth to get this Minotaur. Yeah. And instead of using the ball of yarn that we're talking about, he actually cuts himself. So he's bleeding. There's a trail of blood. So the, the, the blood's leading him. So oh, that's they're bad. like, how can we like make that. this more epic? Yeah. We're going right. to make this dude bleed. <laughs> and instead of like, I... in the movie, I wouldn't say. The Minotaur is what I pictured it, mm-hmm. because it looks like this big man who has a, like a like a helmet, not oh. a helmet, like a like a bull helmet, but it's still oh. a person. Oh, so weird. it's okay, it's not yeah. it's not portrayed as like a half man, half bull. Yes, yeah. Kind of yeah. They went for kind of right. like a the mountain that rides kind of Game of Thrones type. Yeah. Of yes. Yeah. 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 They were like, we don't need to talk about bestiality. No, we're, just gonna, <laughs> we're not going to talk about bestiality. We're, we're not in my have, good yeah. Christian yeah. film. So we're just going to make it a man with a, a nice, cool, shiny helmet. Boo! I don't. Like I hate that. that too. Yeah. yeah. No. But Sucks. in the real tale, the Minotaur serves as a chilling reminder of the consequences of divine wrath, human folly, and the monstrous creations that can arise from them. It stands as a symbol of the terrifying and grotesque within the world of Greek mythology. Yeah, that was a pretty good story. I don't know yeah, sh- I didn't good. know shit about yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't know all that until so I did some like, research and thanks for Paige for telling me where this thing comes from and all that other stuff because I, I So I like know. I like I like learning about Greek I don't know what it is, I just like learning about Greek mythology. And I like also learning about the demigods, which Theseus is. If you sit down and you watch a documentary with Paige, <laughs> she'll she'll help you get through it. She will help you. 
Fuck yeah, man. And the Theseus nice. is his father is Poseidon. Oh. Uh, see, that's what as where Perseus me up. is like the son of Zeus. See, yeah, like see, I don't know that. <laughs> like I don't know anything about who's. But that's Poseidon. So the Theseus is the son son of Poseidon. Yes. And Perseus is the son of Zeus, mm-hmm. but Percy Jackson in the new show is a son of Poseidon. Yes. See, that's, After per- it's all that's twisty. That's what fucked me up because when you it's guys were talking adapt- about the show. It's a different adaption. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Wait, how is it? Because Perseus did this in Greek mythology, but Perseus is now doing shit with water. Why does he He's need water? After like, his cousin. I just didn't get it. <laughs> his cousin. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's <laughs> get to uh, one of my favorites, Medusa. There we go. I'm sure a lot, everyone knows Medusa. If you don't, you're wrong. A chick with <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> a chick with snakes for hair, and if you look at her eyes, you turn to stone. In my research, they call her as one of the gorgons. What what is a gorgon? Uh, like a serpent person? Yeah, kind of like, <laughs> like humanoid, a snake, humanoid scary. snake person. Yeah. Uh, snakes for hair. And I, the only thing I know, she's one of three. Yeah, yep. three sisters initially. She's okay, the so most popular sisters. one. Right. Obviously, she definitely is the most popular, but she's also the the only mortal. Well, I'm gonna give you a good description of Medusa based on how they describe her actually in Greek mythology. Because yeah. we, we always think of like a beautiful woman with snakes for hair and usually white eyes or dead eyes, something like that. Yeah. But that's not really how she looks in Greek mythology. With a visage that defies nature itself, she is the embodiment of grotesque beauty. Her once golden locks, now a writhing mass of venomous serpents, uh, writhe and hiss with sinister intent. Gaze upon her face and you risk being turned to stone your very essence frozen in eternal agony. Her extended tongue sticks out her gaping mouth, revealing teeth as sharp as daggers, her eyes wide, ready to look upon those who will turn to stone. Now, what I found out is that early descriptions of her say that she has a beard of snakes as well. Hell yeah! And then later on, they get they drop the beard of snakes. Oh, okay. Which well, is weird I because know, I she know is that. female. So yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, literally from whatever passage, 39, 11, 9, they, they talk about her having a beard of serpents. And then wow. I guess like later descriptions and stuff, they just get rid of the beard for some reason. Uh, yeah. Different adaptations. And right. stuff get, yep. As we know, with a lot of religions, stuff gets dropped and added and stuff mm-hmm. throughout and time. And stories are always more appealing when it's like more like, you know, she was a beautiful person at one point and, right. you know, right. blah, 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 blah. And they try to keep that beauty or that, like kind of like feminine look to these monstrous yeah. people. And then they also like drop like her like sharp teeth and stuff oh, like that. Okay. And so it's literally what we think of now is a pretty chick with snakes for hair. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently she was once a beautiful priestess of Athena, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So h- how did she turn from this beautiful priestess to this disgusting, hissing head of venomous snakes? <laughs> so I'm just going to say that this is probably a really sad, this is a sad story oh, of no. Medusa and oh, it, it's hard it's kind of, it's heartbreaking because it's like Athena was very highly of like you, you have to be a virgin you have to, to have grace you have to have everything Ew, right that's no fun. so be pure. this is where the Art. god Poseidon <laughs> comes in and he immediately takes a liking to Medusa it sexually assaults um, Medusa in Athena's temple and Damn. doing this Athena is outraged because but it's not her fault. No. She didn't it's get not raped. Fault. Exactly. Poseidon Blaming. raped her. So Blaming after that, victim. after that whole thing, because of course Poseidon dips, right. leaves Class. Medusa there to Very have classy. Athena's wrath on her ass. Basically, like, okay, you're defiled, you're disgusting, whatever. And now she cursed Medusa. I see it as like she shouldn't have. Athena shouldn't have done this to Medusa. No, Athena's a bitch. Absolutely not. Because yeah. she was just sexually assaulted by yeah. Poseidon. Poseidon. Clearly now, didn't care about that stuff. Athena and Poseidon also have beef. Oh, shit. So, oh, I didn't know that. What's wrong with them? Athena had the people's attention. Oh, okay. And Poseidon didn't like that. Mm. So, And then there was this whole like competition, oh. and Athena wound up winning. And I just, I just think it, it's because Poseidon and Athena had this, like, conflict but medusa was just she was gorgeous and, and she didn't she thing. didn't have to and she's like collateral damage yeah, yeah. she didn't have to go through this between their crap. Beef. yeah that sucks and that's so. i think that's i remember reading somewhere that there used to be like a um an image of medusa above the doorpost in like ancient greek uh like women's shelters essentially like to i guess say um like you are welcome here 
This is you know, a place for someone who has been through what you've been through, just like this is what she went through, you know? And I've, I've heard that before as well. Oh, well. Like, no. Yeah. I also want to say that he pursued Medusa, but she turned him down. Ooh. So that's also another part that oh, came into yeah, play that, that you like... don't turn down a god because then it'll hurt his little feelings and then oh, boom. <laughs> well, I know that there was like another like like a like an adapt an adaption. I know we keep using that of the story where like she wasn't a priestess and she was like born of the sea and she was like supposedly like super ugly and shit. So like there's mm-hmm. two different versions yes. of it. Yeah, yeah I read that she was yeah. uh, her and her sisters were the offspring of uh, primordial sea deities. Um, Porces and Cedo. She eventually does die. Yeah, yeah, she takes a... So who kills her and why? So Perseus actually kills Medusa. Like we, like I stated before, he's the son of Zeus. Mm-hmm. And um, so he's got the gods on his side. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. So he slayed her and... Um, In Was it Clash of Wrath of the Titans where we see him kill Medusa? And he uses her head to... Kill the I think it's a crash. The it's crash. Yeah, it's the first right. one. You want to use your head as a weapon, essentially. Yeah. So it, and that's what's cool about Medusa too is that even though she's technically dead and killed, her head will literally turn any we'll creature, turn any to, thing to right. stone. I think in that movie it was cool because we saw just like in the in the uh, uh, mythology, he used like mirrors or like the shield to like cut, try to see like where he could go without looking at her. Cause, yeah. Because mm-hmm. she would turn him to stone, obviously, if uh, he looked at her. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. That's, that is a cool idea. Yeah. Find her. Yeah. That's a, it's another case of like the way that you beat the monsters in Greek mythology is like kind of thinking around their yeah. little rules. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to use the ball of yarn to get through the labyrinth. Then yeah. you got to use the mirror to get around Medusa. And right. Here we go. Here and we go. What, that's what Perseus is like known for is yeah. killing. Yeah. Medusa. I thought that scene in that movie was, was, was pretty cool. Yeah. Where, when they were trying to, to kill Medusa. But obviously like all the movies and stuff always perceive her as like evil and vile. And, but she's really, yeah, and she's kind really, of unfortunate. I mean, I'm sure she was pissed after this shit happened to her. She's like, you oh, know what? Fuck yeah. it. I'm going to turn everyone to fucking yeah. stone. Yeah. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I'd be the same Fuck way though. Yeah. Fuck that's um, always a reason. And we saw her in the Percy Jackson show. Um, yes. But it was really cool. When, like when they were doing like the close up shots of her, like obviously she looks like a regular chick. Um, mm-hmm. And she has like this, uh, hat on with this veil but you can see like the snakes it looks like she just has like hair up in buns but you can see like the snakes snakes moving moving. uh, throughout like it's really cool detail and if you also go into detail like what justin was saying like she was wearing this this hat and she had a veil and it would never show her her eyes never show her Mm. eyes right so you automatically know like oh okay this is medusa and so what they do with her head uh percy in the show (laughs) percy uh cuts off her head just like her head's supposed to be cut off and then they had a hat that'll turn someone invisible. So they put the Athena. hat on yeah. the head. Oh, so you can't see the yeah. head. Yeah. And they used the head to kill another monster that was uh, after them. Yeah. And uh, then they they sent the head back to... Mount Olympus. Uh, Mount Olympus. Oh, shit. <laughs> like, yeah. They shipped it. And <laughs> Athena wasn't too proud of her little demigod daughter. Yeah, no. Why? But, because it was impertinent, as they say. Oh... Because we're pissed so off in the Greek gods mythology, <laughs> when they cut off her head, like when what's his face, Perseus cut off her head. What did Perseus do with it? So that's actually a good question because Perseus in the myths actually sent it back to Athena, where she mm. put it on her shield. Oh, oh. as a, that, she's as like, a victory! Ha, ha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as but a victory. Imagine that, which is like, asshole. If you could go in battle with that, it. you would just be fucking yeah, up everybody. Seriously. Yeah, so she puts it on her shield, and that's where. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to remain. Well, <laughs> Hannah, let's go to you. Okay. And uh, what did you have? Which monsters did you pick for us? So the first one that I chose um, was Lamia, which this is a good little segue in from Medusa. Um, but I started with Lamia kind of because I am a huge fan of Neil Gaiman. Yes, you already mentioned him at least uh, three times a week. Yeah, if it's not Neil Gaiman, <laughs> it's Stephen King. If it's not Stephen King, it's Neil Gaiman. I fucking read. It's what I like. Um... So I, Neil Gaiman uses Lamia as a character in Neverwhere. Um, basically, she is this creature who, it, in in Neil Gaiman's version, yeah. she's this creature which is a, a beautiful woman who tries to suck the warm life force out of the protagonist of Neverwhere via a kiss. Um, and she's like a little bit snaky, a little bit cat-like, kind of your like standard succubus mm-hmm. creature um, sent out to devour weak and unsuspecting men. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, 
Uh, the Greek <laughs> conception of Lamia is kind of another one of those stories where Zeus can't keep it in his fucking pants. <sighs> It's as a common as, as, yeah. time. None of these gods can get their shit yeah. together. Everything has multiple heads, and the gods are just fucking everything. Yep. Yeah. yeah, including yeah. animals, <laughs> including their siblings, and yeah. everything Ew. nasty. Yes. Yeah. All, all the shit is going down. Lamia starts out, firstly, as a queen of Libya. Uh, she has this very impressive lineage with her father is Poseidon, who also can't keep it in his pants. Nope. And her mother is Libby, who is like the personification of the country of Libya, kind of like a patron goddess, kind okay. of a symbol, okay. oh, that's cool, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So Zeus can't keep it in his pants. Lamia becomes his lover and Hera finds out. So that's something that you like... don't ever want. He- so wait, Hera so... just finds out whether All you want the time. or not. Poseidon is Zeus's <laughs> brother and... Zeus decided to bone his niece. Yeah, see? Told you. Infidelity. Yeah. It's bad. It's yeah. disgusting. Who who does Zeus not decide to bone? <laughs> oh my god. He, okay. Anybody. Anybody. Um, if he is attracted to you, he's coming, man. Oh Literally. my god. <laughs> yeah, figuratively. Literally. And you never Literally. want Hera to find out. So. You super don't, because she is jealous. And you know what? They're married. I get it. You know? So Zeus takes Lamy as his lover. And Hera finds out. Uh, Lamia is now cursed, and the details of this curse vary, um, depending on who placed the curse and what the actual curse right, right, was. Right. Yeah. Um, firstly, Hera steals Lamia's children and spirits them away to Mount Olympus. Um, all of these the children are killed, except Jeez. for Scylla. Um, I did look up Scylla. Uh, because there's a character of the same name in the Odyssey who's also a monster. And I was like, oh, that could be kind of interesting, but it's not the same Scylla. Uh, okay. And as far as I know, Scylla just goes on to like lead a normal life. <laughs> and the next part of the curse uh, is that Lamia then becomes a monster. Either she's transformed into this monster by Hera as further revenge, or she is somehow transformed into this ugly, angry creature as a result of her grief okay. from the loss of her children. Yeah, that's the one I heard of. Yeah. That it's, she, like, from being so upset and everything, she turned into a monster just like, herself. Bleh. Yeah. Um, just bleh. <laughs> so that, what, was, that was my monster sound what, effect. What kind of monster? What does she look like? She looks like a giant creature with the upper body of a human woman and the lower body of a giant snake, kind of a la Medusa, but without the snakes for hair. Um, and apparently she now eats children. Oh, <laughs> oh God. let's fucking go. She's like, if I can't have children, none of y'all can have children. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Other people get to have children. Uh, and also, like, fuck Scylla, I guess. You know? <laughs> guess. Like, you could have embraced your one remaining daughter, but instead you're nope. going to go beast mode. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> um, we are beast mode. <laughs> <laughs> um, she is also, as, as, like, the last bit of the curse, she is unable to close her eyes. Um, in order to constantly obsess over her dead children and also probably to have herself watch herself eat other people's children. Oh, that's sick. Truly. (laughs) Um, As sort of a weak consolation, Zeus grants her the gift of prophecy, which I think would have been more helpful at the beginning of all of this. (laughs) Yeah. Which, thanks a fucking lot, Zeus. This is all your fault. Um, (laughs) As always. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Uh, yeah, and he also gives her the ability to remove her own eyeballs in an effort to combat the not being able to close your eyes part of the curse. And I want to know, like, really, that's, I'm, I see your face. Can't he just be like, okay, boom, close, your, close eyes. your eyes. Yeah, because I guess he can't, or blink, he can't uncurse a curse. The, I guess okay, the I gods guess can't uncurse yeah, okay. the other gods' curses, because otherwise everything would be all fucked up. How does her, so if she... Now oh she can God. remove them. Yeah. So like, if her well, fucking eyes don't blink, how don't they fry out of her head on their own? They they probably didn't know that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But does I want to know how she like sleeps. A frog, or did she have like the like, constant, put water like in them? A constant stream of tears. Maybe. Constant. I mean, if she's, she's already sad, sad about, about her. her kids being dead, yeah. You know. There you are. Um, <laughs> sorry, Lamia. I can't. Uh, I want to know how she sleeps. If I was her, I would put my eyeballs in like a little dish and just put a little lid over them and then take them back out and put them back in. Only like, you would lenses. have like a whole idea of like, like what, what you would do if you were Lamia. <laughs> like dentures, you know, you take it yeah. out. Yeah, I, I was like contact lenses, but dentures are oh, yeah. a little yeah. bit more apt, you know. Yeah. Or just glass for the, eyeball. Yeah. yeah. 
I had a I had a professor in college with a glass eye. Oh wow. It was pretty cool. I could never tell which one it was. Oh my god. Because they were, we're talking about fucking eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> he was a really cool fault. professor. He was a really cool professor. <laughs> oh my god! Um, in, there are some versions of the Lamia myth where, in addition to eating children, she also drinks the blood of men that she seduces. Which I guess that's what Neil Damn. Gaiman picked up on. Hmm. Um, that's lit. That is lit. I was just gonna say, right? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Fucking get him. Uh, Lamia is also said to be the mother of a class of monsters or demons known as the Empuse. Um, <laughs> Embuse. I knew it was coming. <laughs> I had to laugh at that. Embuse. Embuse. And and pussy. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I said it. Uh, the Empuse did some work for the Hecate, who sent them after travelers. Uh, due to her status as mother of monsters, kind of like Echidna. Okay. Um, she is also linked to the Judeo-Christian story of Lilith and the Lilum, oh, okay. who are a class of succubus-type demons, demons wow. all okay. birthed by Lilith. Crazy how that intertwines with the different yeah. religions. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. really cool. there's cross-pollination yes, everywhere. Yes, of course there is. I love it. Um, Lamy was, uh, her, her kind of thing, she was used as a fairy tale villain to kind of scare the kids it's into being, behaving. Right, okay. yeah, like, oh, they, if you don't behave, Lamy is coming to get your bitch ass. Yeah, yeah, she's coming in your fucking window, should, bro. <laughs> 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 they should fucking tell it to all the new generations that's coming up, because those kids, are they wilding. need to be taught a lesson. Dude, yeah. I see them on the rough. TikTok. <laughs> but that's <laughs> the whole story of Lamy. Uh, I'm I was very interested because I for one I had no idea what Lamia were. I finally it's, found something you didn't know that much about. Yeah, in Greek. It's, wow. It's this is very interesting to learn about, and yeah, yeah. thanks Anna. Hannah, Hannah always brings a good story. Yeah, she has, like, like, really do. She takes like the least known stuff and like makes it into this yeah. cool crazy story like that that scary ass fucking. Needle head oh. thing that you sent. Oh, the needle head. Thing. I don't know the fucking the crone of the cat. Yeah, that's, yeah, that thing oh, with the fucking she's nails back. in it. I swear to God, I got cursed after that story. That was terrible. I got cursed after that one. Um. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Just the like curse had, of had, the gods. Like I had bad dreams after looking at the the shadow doll. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Man. With that. No, you my gotta... dreams are fucked regardless of what I do or say. They're so just sorry. fucked up. <laughs> Oh. Well, what was another one that you looked up? Another one I looked up. I also, I kind of went with the theme of things that are ladies on the top and another thing on the bottom. Okay. Um, so half ladies. Yeah, half ladies. Uh, so I also, <laughs> I also covered harpies, um, which I thought I knew what they were heading into this. I but... didn't know harpies were in Greek mythology. Oh shit! I had really? no idea. No, I had no idea. I said oh. this to Paige the other day. I was like, I didn't even know fucking harpies were a thing. Like. I saw them on video games, but I didn't know that they were like in Greek mythology. Yeah, they're like already a thing. What is a harpy and what are they supposed to look like in Greek mythology? Okay, harpies are often described as bird-like creatures the size of an eagle, but hard line, no larger. Okay. Uh, this is kind of surprising given their reputation for destruction. Uh, harpies are often said to have the claws and beaks of birds, uh, but later, depictions like they used to be just birds right and then like, of course and then later, later on writings, yeah. later depictions give them a human head oh. uh they are typically female harpies are oh uh harpies are also the daughters of typhon and echidna oh there you go and oh, okay. there are there are several of them um i don't i don't think they have names they're just kind of there yeah um harpies are associated with the wind and the air although and they are thought to represent kind of the dual nature of the air so harpies they're another one of those myths that kind of exists to explain a natural phenomenon oh, okay mm -hmm. um and you get kind of the dual nature of the wind as both graceful and playful or destructive and frightening harpies are sometimes described as the hounds of Zeus and were known to do his bidding, um, which is interesting because they're bird-like and I don't think there's ever really a description of them as particularly dog-like. Right. Um, but the most famous story in which the harpies feature is that of King Phineas of Thrace. Uh, Phineas was possessed of the gift of prophecy and Zeus was pissed that Phineas knew so much ahead of time and punished him. What by... a little bitch. All Zeus pissed. is always pissed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> He's just, he exists to fuck shit up for mortals. Literally. <laughs> um, so Zeus sends Phineas of Thrace to this island with an endless feast that he is unable to eat. 
uh, because before he can take even a single bite, the harpies swoop down and steal the food from his hands and quote unquote befoul the rest, which I think that means that they they're- shit on it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> like a fucking bird at the Literally. beach. Yeah. Yeah. Bird was what Justin seagull. did. <laughs> Justin got shit on it. I got shit on the beach. Oh no. <laughs> and a seagull <laughs> once was. took the sandwich out of my hands. Uh, but Phineas is later rescued from harpy-induced starvation by Jason and the Argonauts with the help of the Boreads, who were sons of the North Wind, um, and Iris, a Titaness and the goddess of the rainbow. Oh, uh, pretty. Right? Uh, the Boreads kill one harpy, and the rest are spared through the intercession of Iris, but only under the condition that they never bother Phineas again. Oh, okay. They're like, don't um, fuck with our friend, bro. <laughs> yeah, which I feel like also could have pissed Zeus off, but Definitely. I guess, you know. Like, he can't undo the curse on Lamia, but, like, he's going to ignore Phineas being yeah. Phineas. Whatever. Uh, it is what it is. Cool. That was a, I really like that. Though. Yeah, those are the harpies. Yeah. Um, Do you have stuff to add? No, actually. So all of <gasps> Hannah's, I said this to Jordan last night, all of your monsters that you looked up, like I knew a little bit of the harpies. Like I knew what they looked like. I knew they were, they do Zeus's bidding. Mm -hmm. But I never know like how fully in depth they actually went into yeah. Greek mythology. So all of your monsters that you brought up, I know a little bit about what we're going to talk about next, but um, I thought it was intriguing to learn about. So Hannah yeah. actually brought She always does a good job. Yeah, she does. Yeah. I, I I like to Hannah's learn. queen of the unknown. <laughs> That's oh my god! Can I have that? Yes, I'll put that. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and I like I like the weird I like the weird shit, man. Yeah, you do. So um, what's next? Next, uh, further in keeping with the theme of half a lady, half another thing, uh, and also kind of in keeping with the theme of birds, um, I did sirens. So this is cool because. Here we have some more cross pollination because whenever I think of sirens, I think of pirates because pirates were terrified of sirens. They thought sirens were out in the waters mm -hmm. and they would sing and lure men to their death. I hope I'm a siren in my next life. Me too, that because would be I would cool. definitely lure men to their deaths. Bye. Let's, let's drown some hell yeah. <laughs> Bye. And there's been some creepy videos I've seen on TikTok where guys are like sea deep yeah. fishing or something yeah. at night and you hear like humming or like yeah. some some kind of singing like out in the dark waters like, what the fuck is that and, and he's like, black, so and he's no like idea looking around he's like what is that i'm like get inside the boat <laughs> yeah. like you know like i'm like That's what are you doing what they want you to do they want you to look for them you know mm -hmm. um, uh, it was really there was a really cool adaptation in the one pirates of the caribbean movie where um mm -hmm. they were in the, the small boats and the, the sirens were coming they're all beautiful and pretty and the guys were like trying to go in for a kiss yep. and all of a sudden they just like <laughs> all of a sudden they're Mouths change like jagged teeth. They like, <laughs> hook them into the water. Oh my god! That's uh, scary. That was cool. that scene. In, uh, okay, so the last Pirates of the Caribbean movie was trash. Yes. But... <laughs> <laughs> yes I don't think yes. I've ever seen Compare it. Compare the You yes. don't need to. But but what what are they like in Greek mythology? Is it the same thing or kind of? Um, the def. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm reading this. It says it was a bisexual awakening, awakening for me. me. Oh my god! It really was. <laughs> what, just listening to that woman creepily saying my job. I was like <gasps> <laughs> hyperventilating in a movie theater. Oh my theater. God. So that scene in the movie that was a that was a bite. Yeah, it was. It was your like, bisexual moment and your it one of them. <laughs> oh I love that. You've got you've got a scary woman and a hot priest. And She's a, she literally wrote also the hot priest. Very bisexual energy. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> because I have to write some random shit before I get into writing my, my bit, because otherwise I'm just going to stare at the page and not know what to do, and I panic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what else about what sirens? What is a siren? Um, uh, I got to cool down. Um, <laughs> the actual definition of a siren is very much dependent upon what they do. Um, sirens are beautiful women who hang out on sharp rocks out in the ocean and sing beautifully to lure men in ships toward them in order to wreck the ships on the rocks and drown the men, presumably to eat them. Cool. I don't know if it's worse if they eat them or if they just do it for fun. I hope they do it for fun. <laughs> yeah. Do it for fun. Uh, we're gonna get the weak men. Um, <laughs> sorry men who listen to this podcast. Yeah, we're we horrible. You. 
<laughs> we appreciate you for listening. You if are we were sirens, we wouldn't eat you. Yeah, you are Ken <laughs> Um The ancient Greeks had a strong seafaring tradition, so it's not difficult to see how the beautiful but deadly nature of a siren would mirror the beautiful yet treacherous nature yeah, of the sea. Yeah, they have a lot of yeah. good sea monsters that we mm-hmm. should probably, we could probably do a whole podcast just on the sea monsters. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Because they're pretty badass. They're super scary. While sirens are spoken of in the English language interchangeably with mermaids, uh, they are therefore thought to be mostly the same thing, uh, but this is not necessarily the case. Um, I think the two are conflated because they do mostly the same thing with the singing and the luring yeah. into their deaths on the rocks. And it's also possible and even likely that many of the European merfolk myths are based upon the older myths of sirens. Um, the difference is really that while merfolk tend to have the upper body of a human being and the lower body of a fish, uh, sirens are actually just fully human or human looking. They're just ladies. (laughs) Like they're just beautiful women that sit out on the rocks uh, and sometimes play an instrument. Uh, In some of the earliest artistic depictions, sirens are actually depicted with uh, bird bodies. So they're not human or fish at all they're a bird body with a big like outsized human head oh interesting oh, okay yeah um and the bodies of the birds have very large scaly feet and sometimes they also have lion's manes kind of circling back to what justin said about medusa having a beard yeah. there are yeah. some very very early depictions yeah, of the very early stuff yeah, yeah there's sirens with beards also maybe they didn't want to like sexualize them like as male or female maybe they wanted them to be like kind of both like, and yeah. then they put genderless. like, yeah, they like put, they kind of didn't want them to be gender based because they were monsters. Could be. That's, huh. that's cool. just me being an outsider, not knowing shit on the subject. Yeah, I mean, man, I am not a fucking expert either. We're, we're all <laughs> but like, just, if you saw that, like, a, I'd a be, guy like, would be oh. like, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I'm not going over there. You would be like, oh, fuck that. Like, yeah, like <laughs> maybe that's why they changed it because they were like, okay, well, if we want to keep up with the merfolk or the siren story, we have to make them look beautiful, at least somewhat yeah. appealing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, like if if they want you to come over here to be eaten, you're gonna want to go over there. Yeah. They yeah, want right. you. They want you to come over, <laughs> so they're not gonna be like. Terrifying. Know, bearded and bird. Weird humanoid people. things. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was too weird and it didn't work. <laughs> Sometimes in very early depictions, uh, they are like tiny little sparrow sized women uh, with bird heads. Hence the singing. I guess they sing like a bird. So okay, they got a bird okay, head. That makes so sense. That, like, yeah. It makes sense. Um, and other times they are female figures with bird like feet. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, very interesting. Because so, I always think of, you know, Mermaid. Yeah, yeah, I literally, I literally yeah. just think of mermaids. Yeah. I was uh, very surprised to hear that in some of the more common depictions, they're just ladies. <laughs> oh, uh, important bit about the sirens is that apparently no man shall be able to escape the sirens, uh, or else the sirens will die. Oh, that oh. sucks. So they have this like caveat. Um, the two most common depictions, or the two best known depictions of sirens are in Jason and the Argonauts and in the Odyssey. Um, I did I did start reading the Odyssey as prep for this and I didn't get that far, so it was all for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like trying to fly, like, yeah, I read the fucking Odyssey. And I read seven books of the Odyssey because I read too slow. Um, but there are, according to the Odyssey, there are between two and five sirens um, and they are their own specific creatures, um, not like uh, the species. They're like oh, mermaids okay. are oh, a species, okay. I suppose. Mm-hmm. The sirens are like like the Titans, which all have names, or the Furies, which all yeah. have names. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so they're like characters in and of their own selves. Um, they Generally, there isn't a super definite origin story for sirens, the sirens, um, but Ovid came up with his own, uh, where they were the playmates of Persephone as a young girl, um, and they were changed into these monsters by Demeter, Persephone's mother, because they uh, didn't stop Hades from abducting Persephone and taking her away to the underworld. Oh, interesting. And I was like, that's kind of an interesting one. Yeah, that is. That. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily canonical, but when something's like however many thousands of years old, like, fuck the canon. You know? <laughs> uh, in Jason and the Argonauts, the sirens are defeated by Orpheus, who whips out his lyre and plays louder 
then the sirens can sing, essentially drowning them out. Oh, okay. so smart. that was oh. smart, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I guess I guess he uh, figured out what was going on yeah. before the sirens, you know, had a chance to yeah. fuck with him as well. But they escaped. Yeah. Uh, like Thanks. you said earlier, they came came up with their own solution to yeah. like solving a problem other than just going in guns a blaze and trying to kill something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. <laughs> so work smarter, not harder. Um, the king of working smarter, not harder is kind of Odysseus, really. Because um, I read the fucking uh, half of the Odyssey. Um, in the Odyssey, in the bit that I did not yet get to, uh, Odysseus plugs his crew's ears with wax uh, so they can't hear the sirens at all. Um, but he's curious to hear what the sirens sound like, so he has the crew lash him to the mast yeah. with ropes so he can listen and, like, scream and fight all he wants, but he's not fucking going over there. <laughs> right. um, and so they do escape as well, uh, but in this version, uh, the sirens all fall into the ocean and die because they the, the men escape. I knew that story. Yeah. About the wax That's and what the I, and Yeah. Me too. It's, you, gotta, you gotta outsmart the monsters. Any other Evil. gods <laughs> or, or uh, demigods, anything come across the sirens? Um, that's a good question. I honestly, I mean, there's Odysseus, and I forget how to say his name. Ulysses? Ulysses. Oh, Ulysses. Ulysses. That's, uh, Ulysses and Odysseus are the same person. Oh, okay. One is just the the Greek and one's the Roman or something. Oh, I don't know. Okay. so that's Something why. like that, yeah. Or so it's, it's like a modern... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's how, okay. yeah. Yeah. I need more uh, cross-pollination of, mm -hmm. of stories mm -hmm. and, and tales. I just yeah. think wow. this is awesome because... Honestly, yeah, this was a great podcast episode, and we only covered half of the monsters that we actually had written down, so we it was potentially... It's a little chaotic. Yeah. It's a little chaotic. But That's we're like, literally Greek all of Greek with, yeah, chaos. all Greek mythology it's is chaotic. It's talking circles. But nuts. Yeah. It's all coming from the chaos. <laughs> yeah. But we have so many more to go over that we could have a part two to this yeah. Uh, yeah. podcast episode. And Paige, thank you for coming on. Oh, yeah, of course. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate the details that you brought in. <laughs> and we're going to have you on for the part two of this. Oh, awesome. At some yeah, point. let's talk more Greek myth. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you, you and I were able to bring in where you can see these monsters in, whether it be movies, TV shows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys um, are yeah. super into pop culture. Me? No. <laughs> yeah. But then I'll, people can actually see, kind of envision what they look like in the stories. Like, You're boring as fuck, yeah. Dan. No. You are so boring. You no. don't fucking read. You don't I like the Titans. I like the Titans. Pop culture Titans. I watch as like documentaries. I'm like, so the only way you got me to learn this was I literally went on YouTube and said, okay, I need to learn Greek mythology and listen to a 30, I mean, um, a three hour, like, big ass series of Damn. all of Greek mythology. Like, it's really good. They were supposed to come out with a TV show, but the gods, they never released an episode. That would be cool. Oh, that would cool. piss me, cool. it made me mad. It's yeah, all everything. very wild, cool stories. Thank you all so much for listening. Um, this is a really interesting episode. We didn't, haven't done anything like this before. Yeah, let us know how you like it. Yeah, please let us know if there's other monsters you want us to cover. Let us know other uh, ideas like this, other kind of mythology you want us to cover. Um, just reach out, shoot us a message. And don't forget, because we need more spooky fan stories. Send your spooky fan stories to ghostencounterstories at gmail.com or message us on social. Yes. Um, Hit us up. Yeah, yeah we we'll love do a reading spooky fan story next time. This was a little bit of a doozy this time. So <laughs> a little like, bit. Yeah. Um, but we love reading them and we need yes. some more. So yes. don't forget to send in your spooky fan stories. And Paige, thank you again for coming on the podcast. I yeah, really appreciate course, it. It was yeah. great having you on. Thanks for having me, Justin. Of course. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Stay spooky. Go pet Cerberus for me. Hot priest, hit me up. Uh,